Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Today we're going to check out the 3 and 3 quarter inch probe droid with Darth Vader. So let's head to that table and check it out. Taking a quick look at the packaging and you got the probe droid front and center as this is really the star of the set. Nice image of Hoth in the background with some snow, mountains, adats walking around, some snow troopers in the battle as well. And then you can see the included Darth Vader figure through the window on the side. Left side of the box you got your force link advertisement showing that both are compatible. And the other side you got a nice image of Darth Vader. Flipping onto the back side, of course, you do see the product, both the actual toys themselves, with a brief write-up about the probe droid, a little photo showing off the shooting missile, and of course the Force Link advertisement off to the right side, and some other figures that are also available in the line. Taking a look first at the probe droid, and this thing is fantastic! Looks really nice, you know, we haven't seen an upgrade into the probe droid since, I think it was released in 98, in the Power of the Force 2 line, that deluxe packaging. That was a pretty decent figure, but this one is outstanding, really a good upgrade. Overall, the figure is molded in that very dark gray plastic, almost black. And then around the head area, you've got the glossy black eyes or sensor areas of the probe droid. Molded nicely with these little panels and, you know, bits and gears and whatnot sculpted in there. At the top of the probe droid, you got a little bit of red paint throughout. Just very small amount, but it looks good. Along with some silver painting for, like, little scuff marks and such on the top of the head. For the main body, again, the molding continues throughout the rim of it with more panels and whatnot sculpted in there. The figure does have a little missile projectile that can shoot out. Uh, that's relatively hidden well in the main body, but you do get the back end that sticks out that you push down to have it shoot out. I'll show that later. And then looking at the leg area, again, you know, good molding continues, the sculpting of it with little shocks and stuff on the legs. You get good detailing throughout that. And if I didn't mention it already, the figure does come with a little plastic stand that you can put it onto through the center of the body. So you don't need to try and, you know, finagle the legs in such a way to have it stand on, which you had to do with the previous release back in 98. And then just to do a quick comparison of the figure from 98, this is it here. Uh, as you can see, obviously the coloring, very different. Uh, and then the little missile that shot out was a bright orange, whereas the one here is just molded in black plastic, same as the body. Uh, the legs on this one, you did have some articulation in there at the top, and we'll get to that later, but you do have the same here. Um, but the missile, as I mentioned, orange shot out of the head here, whereas for this body, push down here, and it'll shoot out right there, out of that front there. And then a couple other differences to this is that on this 98 version, you could lift up that center head, reveal this kind of gun underneath, which is odd considering you got a missile here, but anyways, you know, little playability there. And then the head popped off on this one. That's right, there we go. Uh, so you had that little center trigger to push down and the head would pop off, which you don't get here. You know, no big deal. I mean, this is, I feel like a great upgrade. I don't mind that the head doesn't shoot off here with that exploding action that you saw, you know, when Han Solo shot it. But anyway, so that's some of the key differences. Uh, this stand here pops out and at the bottom you do get a little empire logo there pretty subtle but a little added touch uh, as far as articulation the head you can spin around 360 degrees and then uh, this little gun here you can turn a little bit I mean it's it's a small thing so if you got bigger hands like me good luck moving that around but it can be done and then otherwise each of these legs has a little bit of articulation to it uh, these smaller ones are just going to bend up at the body, and then each leg does rotate around. That's all of them. And then it's got a little hand, if you will, a little claw or whatever that does spin around. And let's see. So that's on each of the smaller ones. Where's the other guy? Right there, I think. So there's that, and then there's the bend there. So with the single elbow, none of those turn. But on this larger one where you've got an additional joint, Aside from the twisting and the, uh, sorry, no arm movement or hand movement there, claw, whatever, but you get the bend there and then the bend here. So what each leg seems to have the two points of articulation just different on each leg. And the figure does have force link, but with my big hands it doesn't seem to work so well, so I'll just set it next to it. And then a slide forward. And there's your side to side sound. So good sounds right out of Empire Strikes Back. And sliding on to Darth Vader. You know, it's it's not a bad looking figure. 
but it's also not a great figure. As far as the sculpting and design of the figure overall, it's very similar to what we just received in the Rogue One line. But going in on that head sculpt area, the helmet, it's a little dull for me. Certainly not that black high gloss to it, uh, but we've received it in other figures and even in the uh, Rogue One Darth Vader. And I feel like the eye area is maybe just a little bit too big, but otherwise it's decent looking. Everything is as, as it should be, the face and the cheek area is sculpted pretty well. You get a little bit of silver in there in that face plate also. For that upper chest armor plating, I will say through there that I, I'm not fond of the coloring of that spot either. Instead of being silver, it's this more like milky gray color. But otherwise, through the arms and chest area, the utility belt, everything's looking pretty good there. You know, I'm not expecting the highly detailed paint job uh, that he would have, but he's got the red lights, the blue lights, the little button knobs and stuff, and some greens and reds through his belt as well, and little silver uh, buckle detailing there too. Hand area is looking good with the uh, shiny black gloves. And then through that leg area, you know, as you would expect, you see the nice texturing and the pant detailing. The boots are as I would expect. Very nice high gloss black paint job to it. I'll slide it off the turntable real quick. This cape, I gotta say, does sit very nicely on the shoulder and is removable. Usually for something like this, it falls off quite easily, but you're still able to bring both hands up. The robe stays on quite nicely, or the cape rather. Um, one thing I find odd, and they did this on the Rogue One figure as well, is that these inner robes, uh, for some reason, has a slit to it. And I think it's all one piece. I could be wrong, but for some reason there's slits. I don't know why. The legs would come out just fine, you know, even if the slits weren't there. And it's not like we've got any side articulation that would be needed to open those legs up. So I think that seems to be an odd design choice. But otherwise, good looking figure. And then I'll just jump on into this uh, articulation. The head, of course, does swivel side to side. And let's see, nothing up and down at the shoulder area. Both arms spin all the way around, no problem. And you do have some waist articulation, being able to spin the figure side to side. And then, as I mentioned on that leg area, both legs do come out. And then you can even swing them back if you want. One thing I will say is I am having a little bit of difficulty getting the Darth Vader here to stand upright on his own, uh, easily anyways. Every time I try and put it with both legs, you know, standing how it should be, he just falls back over. A little bit too back heavy. I have found that if I just bring his left foot forward a little bit, kind of allows him to sit on his robe, if you will, make a little tripod stance out of it. And um, so that's a bummer. That's one thing where a little ankle articulation would have gone a long way to allow the figure to lean forward, maybe, and, and not be so back heavy. And now Darth Vader does come with one accessory, and as you would expect, it's his lightsaber. Pretty nice looking red blade lightsaber. Uh... You know, again, nothing we haven't seen before. Uh, as far as the hilt, you got the nice silver and black painted in there. Definitely looks like Darth Vader's lightsaber. But this red blade here does really have a nice deep red look to it. Not as washed out in pink as some of the other lightsabers are. Uh, one of the first things I noticed, though, immediately as I took it out of the packaging was it certainly seemed a lot shorter uh, than what I'm used to seeing for lightsabers. So I grabbed the lightsaber from the Rogue One Darth Vader, which is this one here. And as I line it up, you know, bottom to bottom, does come in just a little bit shorter. I mean, not that much, but it was surprisingly noticeable to me. And then just in case you were wondering, the lightsaber blade is not removable. That's all one molded piece there. And for the force link sounds in Darth Vader. If you only knew the power of the dark side, prepare your troops for a surface attack. Sweep the asteroid field until they are found. Sliding them forward does ignite the lightsaber. And then side to side, gets you the uh, lightsaber waving sounds. So some good sound bites in there from Empire Strikes Back, all pretty specific to that movie, keeping with the theme of that set. So overall, I love the set. You know, Vader is, it's just a Vader, but really the probe droid is what stands out. That's the reason why you're buying this. And I think that's a pretty well-made toy there. And so that wraps up this look at the probe droid with Darth Vader. I'd love to know your thoughts on this set in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.